Hey, Tony, KD8RTT. Um, I uploaded a video a little while ago showing me uh, receiving a 10 meter, or yeah, overhearing a 10 meter QSO from Ukraine to the States um, on 10 meters FM with this radio. So I had mentioned a while ago that I was getting one, so I thought I'd do a quick video uh, overviewing this setup. Um, so what this is, is it is a Motorola MT-1000 um, surplus commercial radio, um, which I got on eBay. So basically, um, what originally came with it was the auction, was the um, charger, a battery, the radio itself. Didn't come with an antenna. I paid around 60 bucks. Um, I won it from bidding. Um, and it's a surplus radio that's originally for VHF low band. Um, there's multiple low band splits. So this one was, I think it's 29.7 megahertz to 35 megahertz um, is what the original intended split was. Um, and basically you can program these things slightly out of band. So you, this one will program down to about 29.5 uh, covering the FM portion of the 10 meter band. So I was looking for a 10 meter handheld. Um, there's some that do single sideband and AM. There's small mode ones um, that are kind of uh, uh, aimed at the CV crowd, but are made for 10 meters, easily um, easy to mod. So there's always uh, some opinions there. But basically, they're not the greatest quality. They're kind of expensive for what they are, and they're not that easy to find. So I came across this rather inexpensively, um, and it being only FM, is somewhat limited. Um, I had never really done... 10 meters FM in the past, but I thought this would be a neat opportunity to do that. So I picked this radio up. Um, when I got it, they pre-programmed it. Um, so basically, to program this, you need a special cable, because there's the programming connector, um, which you can buy those cables for like 20 bucks on eBay. And then you need to get the software, which they don't make anymore, um, although it's easy to find if you know where to look. Um, and you can, you can even buy it some places also. Um, but it's old software, but the biggest hurdle is you need a DOS computer to program it. Um, you can't use a DOS box on a new computer. It has to be a pure DOS old computer. So that's kind of hard to find. Um, I actually have one at home, so I'm going to try to get it up and running to program this thing. Um, I need a USB floppy drive, though, so I can move the software from my new laptop over to the uh, DOS computer. So kind of uh, waiting on something like that. That's not a... Uh, I'm not in a big hurry to do that because I got it pre-programmed. But basically, um, it's six channels. This is the channel selector knob. Um, and what I got programmed on it were these frequencies. You can see that. So 29.5, 29.6. Those two are both FM simplex uh, frequencies. And then uh, 0 0.62, 0 0.64, and 66. And notice that those have a repeater offset. Uh, those are three of the common repeater frequencies. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to get 29.3 megahertz programmed on there um, because in Asia and Europe, that's their 10 meters um, simplex frequency for FM. Uh, here in the States, it's the 29.6 frequency, but they couldn't program it that low. Um, it is possible you have to modify the software a bit. There's guides online, but the person who programmed this one for me didn't have that uh, worked out. So. Couldn't get that frequency now, but maybe in the future. So yeah, I got those, what I, what I felt like were uh, pretty good frequencies to get programmed. Like I said, I haven't done a lot on FM 10 meters, but did some research online and that's what I came across. So yeah, that's how it came. Um, with it, I also bought another battery, um, which is new. You can buy new batteries for them still. I think even Radio Shack sells them. Um, and you can even get a lithium ion one with a charger from China on eBay for like 40 bucks. So they're still making accessories for them. There's also, um, a speaker mic, which is easy to get for like 20 bucks. Might end up getting that. Um, and of course there is an antenna for it. Now it has this kind of, um, uncommon connector here. Um, and you might not be able to, well, you might be able to see there's no, it's all the hot lead. Um, there's no ground lead on that connector. So that kind of limits your antenna choice. Um, you can get an adapter that connects to this connector that'll basically give you a um, SO239, um, but it's kind of bulky and not the easiest thing to find and I didn't bother getting it. Uh, couldn't find one right away on eBay anyway. So what I did was, is I got an adapter that converts that one to a BNC. 
So again, you cannot. It, I mean, it, it, the adapter doesn't change that you can't. There's no ground lead, so you're basically stuck to a rubber duck or a whip type antenna. So there is a rubber duck antenna, like I said, for this one, um, but it's like twenty dollars, and it's few. I mean, it's it's not gonna work for DX at all. Um, of course, these were made for like repeaters and and local communications, so the antenna's not the best. So what I ended up doing was, so I went to Gigaparts and picked this up. So this is a 10 meter uh, whip, um, it's telescopic. Gets about a meter and a half long, I think. Um, and that's it when it's collapsed. Terminates in BNC. Um, and it was originally designed for the FT817, but I thought it'd be a good, good antenna for this radio, good option. Um, so I picked that up, that was like 20 bucks, a little bit more than that. Um, now this extra battery was 20 more, so I'm up to around 100 bucks on this setup. And uh, that's it, basically. So, you know, it's easy to just put the antenna in the adapter and oops, <laughs> screw it on the top of the radio. Um, it, it's pretty secure. BNC kind of wiggles around, so when it's extended, there is a little bit of give, but... I don't think it'll be a problem. It sits in the charger like that. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm I'm careful with it, but I I think if if I am careful with it, it won't be an issue. So that's the setup. Um, I kind of put this together myself. I've seen some information online about these on 10 meters. People have done that. It's not that uncommon. Um, but usually, it seems that it's with the aim of solely doing repeaters, um, which I'd like to do, but. There's no repeaters nearby, um, either my house in Cleveland, uh, my college in Terre Haute, Indiana, or my current QTH, which is around Indianapolis, Indiana. So I can't uh, get into a repeater on my own um, unless the band helps me. So that's why I got the bigger antenna, plan to see what I can do with it. Um, and actually, uh, I did have the opportunity to pick up some uh, pick up a QSO uh, from the between a US ham and a Ukrainian ham so um, I'll put an annotation to that video so you can check that out um, but uh, I haven't talked to anyone from here um, I've tested it with my scanner so I know it's it's working but I haven't worked anyone yet but yeah like I was saying I kind of put this together on my own I kind of figured out the antenna situation just by looking and Puts out like five or six watts, I think, um, and uh, it's a good quality radio. I mean, it was a little dirty when I got it. I had to clean it up, and of course the battery's not the same color, you know. Shows some wear, got some markings on it, whatever, but it's really solid. This is my first Motorola radio, so I have to say, I can see why now everyone is so uh, big on Motorola. It's a really solid product. I mean, this thing could be dropped. I'm confident in that and still work. The only real part you have to worry about is the antenna. So, looks like a good radio. So, I was excited I got this. Um, they're not that hard to find on eBay. Um, right after I bought this one, the seller put up another one for uh, auction. And it seems like there were some when I looked at the old complete listings. So, they're not that uncommon. But there are multiple band splits. So, this radio comes in other versions too, including one that will cover the 2 meter band um, entirely. So, it's it's... You know, they're, those are pretty inexpensive, even for around 20, 30 bucks. Um, but the big thing with, with these is they need to be programmed by a computer. And if you don't have the equipment to do it yourself, you're looking at like 15 to 20 bucks to get someone else to reprogram it for you. Which again, that's not hard to find. Plenty of people online will do that. That's an extra cost. So you kind of got to really think through the frequencies you want. And especially in this case, we only get six. Um, that's why I went with the ones I went with. So I didn't get any PL tones. You can get a PL tone. Um, and some of these repeaters require it. Of course, there's a ton of, there's basically, let's see, I got three of the repeater frequencies programmed in for 10 meters. And I think there is one or two more common ones. Um, and they're all over the place and some need PL, some don't. So I didn't know what I was going to be working. So I just thought I'll get it with no PL and see what I get. So that's where I'm at with that. But yeah, I'm looking to make some more videos in the future of me using this thing. I'm really excited about it. It's nice and portable. You can get a smaller charger too, which is like half the size, which I might do. Um, just so I can take it portable places when I travel or whatever. Um, but yeah, so that's my uh, first uh, look at my 
new 10 meter FM Motorola radio. So if you have any questions, let me know. I don't know everything about these radios, but I've been doing a lot of research, so I kind of kind of an idea of what's going on with them. Um, but if you have any information, I'd love to hear it too. If you have any experience doing this, I'd definitely like to hear about it. So, all right, guys, I'll uh, see you later. 73.